How do I cut someone short who doesn't know how to shut up? I, 22F, have to do a group project for university with two other women, 20s and 30s. The woman in her 30s, I call her Angela, is exhausting. She isn't stupid and I respect her work ethics and she does a good amount of work, probably the most out of us three, voluntarily but the way she talks is driving me insane. She is one of these people who love to talk a lot. Even if it is not necessary to discuss it, even if it isn't even the topic and she does that thoroughly. We just had a Zoom call about how to split the rest of the work, which should have taken 10 minutes maybe, but it took almost 2 hours. Both me and the other girl tried to interrupt Angela almost constantly but she wouldn't shut up. She just spoke through us. I almost scream her name at her at times but she would just keep talking. She basically showed us the whole presentation, which we all have access to as we are all working on it simultaneously via Google and would discuss every little detail that's not important. Again, we only wanted to split up the remaining tasks. When it was over I basically screamed into a pillow for 5 minutes to calm myself down. But we'll have to practice the presentation at least once and I don't think I can go through it without getting a coronary. Any advice on how to take over the lead in a conversation or just getting her to just up? Alternatively I'd also take tips on anger management. She turns me into Hulk basically. Too long didn't read, woman I have to work with for a project, university, doesn't shut up. Never. And discussions that could be done in minutes are taking hours and I'm losing my mind. Move the meetings to texting, rather than voice. Mute her as necessary. Set up meetings without her. Inform her of what was discussed afterwards. Set up a time limit for the meetings. Quit the meeting on time even if the agenda doesn't get covered. Designate a way to get your turn like during a debate, with rules about not speaking for more than one minute per turn. Talk to her outside of these official meetings about how the amount of talking, and the fact that the meetings run so long as a result, make you guys feel point it out to her, so that she knows. The time limit on meetings is a really helpful one. If she goes over the time limit, just interrupt her and say, Hey Angela, just letting you know that I gotta get going now. I've got another meeting slash event slash scheduled thing to get to. Thank you for everything you've done. Talk to you all soon. And end call. People use that line in Zoom meetings all the time. If Angela literally doesn't allow her to even say that, type it into the chat, and then email her later to let her know that she needs to give others a chance to speak. Part of me wonders if maybe Angela is somewhere on the spectrum and can't pick up on social cues. Her behavior is so bizarre. Op might need to be literal and direct with Angela so she can understand that this behavior isn't okay. You need to run the meeting, and redirect every time she gets off on a tangent or starts going on too long. Okay, we need to move on now. Let's hear from someone else about this. Let's stick to the topic at hand slash let's not get lost in the weeds. Just keep it on a tight track. You might feel like you're being bossy, but some people need really pointed direction or else they spin everything out of control. Since communication on the Zoom call wasn't working out, maybe you could have said I only planned 20 minutes for this, it is time for me to go, so let's plan the rest via text. For the upcoming practice session, maybe make a schedule ahead of time, introduction, 2 minutes, part 1 to 5 minutes, etc. But different people have different communication styles, and some people are extra lonely in quarantine and seize on opportunities to talk like this, you're right that you should try to learn not to let annoying people bother you so much. Think about your happy place or something smile. This is a good idea, I'd suggest letting everyone, uh, know at the beginning of the call hey everyone, I have a hard stop in 30 minutes so I'm going to try and keep us on track during this call. Make up another phone call slash meeting that you absolutely cannot miss that starts half an hour after your meeting. That will hopefully help to speed things along and make her realize that she can't overrun. You could also set an agenda, with timings that everyone gets a change to talk. If you do that, 
make sure Angela goes last so that others at least get to have their input first. Another thing to consider is that it's possible she is going a bit deaf but doesn't realize, so she might not be hearing you speak when you do. This happened to me, I hadn't realized I was losing my hearing until I was in a situation where other people could hear a noise I couldn't. It is probably still a character trait with her though. If it really doesn't get sorted you might just have to have it out with her. Perhaps don't do it directly to her but say you are concerned the meetings are overrunning and you want that to be resolved. I have a hard stop at blah. Start the meeting with that, keep reminding how much time you got left. Any way to get share documents or other collab tools involved? Maybe Angela is a, starved for human contact and b, feels this is her one chance to get all her thoughts on record. Develop a share document that she can give her notes. Set expectations in the meeting invite. We have 30 minutes, and I have a hard stop at X hour. We'll spend 5 minutes reviewing X. Take Angela aside and directly ask her Angela, on the call yesterday, I was borderline screaming your name, and you were talking over me. What was up with that? I found it very disconcerting. Sometimes people with impulse control issues don't realize what they're doing and when you name it clearly it's more clear it's an issue. Saying her name is not working, obviously. So maybe ahead of time, think of other words that get her attention like stop or time or hey. Something borderline rude that will get her to abruptly stop. I, 23F, hate having male roommates, 27M, 28M, and I thought I'd be fine with it, but I feel self-conscious and anxious all of the time. I moved into this apartment thinking that I would be fine with having a male roommate, but I feel anxious and self-conscious all of the time. Another male roommate is moving in, which means it will be just me and two men on the first floor. The two other female roommates live upstairs. My lease isn't up until May. Just can't feel comfortable around men in general. I thought having a male roommate would help, but now I feel nervous in my own home. I don't really get along with men, most of my friends are girls and I mainly date girls. I have OCD and a skin issue, which causes me to be in the bathroom for a fairly long amount of time. I told them to knock on the door if I'm taking too long, but it just makes me feel even more embarrassed that there's a guy around, noticing that I take a while in the bathroom. I also hate when they see me without makeup on. I sometimes get intrusive thoughts that they could hurt me in the middle of the night, which I know would not happen. My male roommate is really nice, considerate, and harmless, so I don't know why I'm worried. I'm planning on moving home for a while once I get the COVID vaccine through my job since I'm working virtually. Too long didn't read, I feel uncomfortable having male roommates, but my lease isn't up until May. How can I calm down about this so that I don't feel anxious all of the time? Hey, Op, how are you treating your OCD? It might be worth talking to your doctors about your intrusive thoughts and anxiety. Honestly, it sounds like you need therapy, you're putting far too much weight into the gender difference of your roommates. Assuming they are nice, considerate, and harmless as you said, there's no legitimate reason to feel the way you are feeling outside of some personal insecurities or similar. Talk to a therapist. Betting $10 you have some repressed feelings slash issues in your past that you need to face and overcome. Repressed issues in the past aren't so much of a thing here as the OCD she mentions. OCD is a high anxiety disorder. It also causes the person not to trust their own brain, doubt, and tends to involve irrational preoccupations and people with OCD are generally aware it's irrational. She mentioned intrusive thoughts, a major characteristic of OCD. That means that in the course of her day she has to deal with intense, unwanted, often vivid images of her roommates hurting her. These fears of course have no grounding in reality, but it's hard not to feel jumpy when your brain is supplying you with an unending highlight reel of bad things that could potentially happen to you. She does need therapy, but there's no necessarily repressed feelings or insecurities. It sounds like she's completely aware of what's going on in her brain it's irrational fear with no basis in reality. Honestly, this sounds like something you should work through with a therapist. You said that it's not just about your roommates, it's about men in general. If that's the case, then even though you're moving out in a few months, you're going to have the same problem in other areas of your life. 
it's not healthy, or convenient really, to feel this level of anxiety while just being in the presence of men. You might as well tackle the issue at its source instead of just trying to cope with it and hoping it'll go away after you no longer live with male roommates. Okay, this may not help you, but here's what I know about guys and living situations. They are 100% caught up in their own world, their own problems and jobs and relationships. Until your behavior affects them in any way, they seriously are not going to notice or remark on it. They are not paying attention to how long you are taking in the bathroom. They are not even aware of it. And they also are not paying attention to your makeup. You seem to know that this is more about how you view yourself than the guys. But, just to reassure you, they not only don't care, they don't even notice. I lived with only guys, I am a woman, for full clarity, for years in college. Can guarantee they do not care if a non-romantic partner has makeup on or not but can you set up as much or your skin slash face slash bathroom routine in your room as possible to ease your own mind? A cheap but decent light and mirror with a vanity, or similar setup could reduce your bathroom time and still give you the same space for facial care. It of course wouldn't be 100% the same but it might reduce your stress. My husband constantly thinks I'm mad at him and it is wearing down my soul. My husband, 28, and I, 27, have been married for two years and have both dealt with depression for a while but his mood swings and drama are really starting to get to me. He is basically always one small inconvenience or look away from a meltdown. Now I understand and empathize with feeling at the end of my rope, but I am really having trouble dealing with the constant drama. Yesterday, we were both sitting and playing on our phones when he told me some totally neutral story about seeing an interesting bird at work. I say something like, that's really cool, then we both continue reading. I made a weird face a few minutes later because I was trying to understand a reddit comment or something. I had no idea he was even looking at me or saw my face. Couple minutes later I look up and he is crying and angry with me. I'm totally confused and ask him what's up and, after a several minutes of him trying to get out words. He says he is upset because he thinks that I'm mad at him for no legitimate reason. So at this point, I am annoyed because I feel totally blindsided. I tell him that I wasn't mad at him at all and that I have no idea why he even thinks that. He is crying acting too overwhelmed to explain to me why he thought I was mad in the first place. Next he crying because I am actually annoyed at him now. I try to tell him that I am just annoyed because I don't know why all this even happened. Then, he freaks out and says it's because I hate him. When I tell him that he is wrong and that I don't hate him, he got mad at me for always telling him that he is wrong. Anyway, after hours of emotional turmoil, he eventually tells me that he thought the look I made while reading was because I was mad at him for something he said about the bird or something. So he thought that I was being a total bitch for being mad at him for no reason whatsoever. This sort of exchange happens multiple times a week. When I reassure him that his thoughts about me are wrong, he feels feels like that invalidates him. When I try to control my tone or facial expressions to appear neutral, he has a meltdown because he thinks I am changing my behavior because I'm afraid of him. When I don't suppress my thoughts or emotions, he sees that as validation that I do in fact hate him. When I tell him that I am mad at him and why, he latches on to his own thoughts on why I am mad and stops listening. The worst part is that I feel so incredibly alone. It seems like every conversation is a minefield. Both positive and neutral statements of mine are randomly taken as extremely subtle underhanded insults. And once he feels like I'm being mean to him, he acts incapable of listening to me. So many times, he will start talking about a book or idea, I listen without interruption for several minutes at a time. It seems like I can't talk about an interest of mine for more than a couple sentences before he thinks I am being mean or I happen to mention something that reminds him of something that reminds him of something that makes him sad. Once his emotions are engaged, no further discussion is possible until he feels better. By then, no one is interested in my original thought. I have tried explaining the coping skills that I have learned to use when I feel anxious or like everyone hates me, but it just doesn't get through. We both plan on starting individual therapy in the next couple months, 
but there has to be something we can do now to help. TLDR, I can't predict when my husband will think I'm mad at him. If I say anything even indirectly that provokes his emotions, our entire day is derailed. What can I do to help this before we can get into therapy?